Hey, what's going on folks? Today I'm going to be checking out a brand new style of solar panel that I have never had here at the shop. And I'm going to be using this on my new camping setup that I am currently building. And I kind of wanted to run a test on it to see how well it's going to perform. Now, this is from All Powers and I've had two or three of their solar panels and they've all performed pretty well. But as you can see, this thing is absolutely paper thin. This is one of their flexible solar panels. This thing does not roll up like a SIGS panel. You can't roll it up like a cigar, but it can kind of conform to a curved surface like the front of an RV or the side or the top of an RV roof where it's kind of curved a little bit. So this will accommodate some of those slight bends. Now, again, you can't roll it up completely, but and obviously it's super, super light, it's nine pounds. Now this is a 200 watt solar panel and I'll flip it over and I'll show you all the specs of the actual solar panel itself, but something like this, it's got its pros and its cons. It's lightweight, it can conform to a lot of different surfaces and you just have a, the ability to kind of put it in a lot more places than you could a rigid glass panel. The downside to these things are, is that it is basically when you install it, it's flat against the surface of whatever you're putting it on. So there's not a lot of airflow underneath, which can make this panel get a little hotter than standard glass panels that you have mounted up about one or two inches off of the mounting surface. So you get some airflow kind of going underneath and keeping the panel cool. When these panels get really hot, it kind of kills the efficiency. So you got your pros and cons. I'm going to be using this in my setup and today I'm gonna to throw it on the back of my truck on top of my hard shell truck bed cover because it's going to kind of emulate how I'm going to be using this panel on my camping rig. So it's November here in Texas. You can't really align these perfectly uh, to, or at least in my case, I, I'm, I won't be able to align it perfectly to the sun like you can kind of manipulate a glass panel. These are kind of wherever you put them, that's kind of where they're going to be. So you just kind of have to hope that you're going to get enough solar energy into the solar panel to charge up your battery. So that's what we're going to be doing today. It's got, of course, your standard MC4 connectors that come pre-installed on it. So you don't really have to worry about connecting any type of cables to it. And it does have one, two, three, four, eight grommet holes with metal reinforced rings. So you technically could tie this down or hang it up you know, if it's not gonna be something permanent. But I'm, in my case, I'm gonna be using some VHB or very high bond tape to tape it to what I'm going to be installing it to and hope it holds. And I might actually end up doing some really heavy duty, like 200 pound zip ties, just as kind of, of a insurance policy going down the highway just in case, but hopefully it works. So lengthwise, we're looking at 54 inches lengthwise, widthwise, about 30 and 5 eighths wide, and again, about nine pounds. So it is extremely light, um, and you have a lot of options of mounting this thing. So guys, I'm gonna go take this out to my truck. I'm gonna lay it on top of it, and I'm gonna hook it up to my Blue Eddy back there. And uh, to be honest, I will be happy to get 100 watts off of this 200 watt panel, because again, I can't manipulate the angle or, or anything like that, and the November time frame, the sun's at a kind of a weird angle, so anyway, 100 watts and I will be extremely, extremely happy out of this panel. So let's get that going and we'll see how many watts we can pull out of this. Well, before we actually go put it on the truck, I kind of wanted to show you up close what this thing looks like. So it does have that ETFE coating on it, that plasticky protective film that's going to protect all these bus bars. And here are these grommet holes all along the edges with the metal ring if you do want to tie this down somehow. And then you've got your MC4 connectors and flipping it over, we can kind of maybe get a good look at some of these specs here. So we got maximum output, 200 watts, open voltage, 38.4, short circuit, 6.8 amps, uh, max output voltage is 32, max output current, 6.25 amps, 120 volts, of course, uh, they claim 22 to 25%, and it is IP68 water rated. So, And here is kind of, of an example of just how thin it is. But now that we got a close-up of it, let's go put it on the truck and see what we can get out of this thing. All right, so here's kind of, of a simulation of how I'm going to end up putting this solar panel on my new setup. But it's just sitting on top of my very kind of warm <laughs> hard shell tonneau cover. And I just, of course, have it hooked up. And let's go check to see how we're doing here. 
So I've got this hooked up to my uh, Blue Eddy AC180, and this is kind of, of a perfect power station for this panel because uh, it accepts 12 to 60 volts, and we are now pulling 28, almost 30 volts off of that panel. And we are getting 91, 89, 90, 91 watts right now. Now, 92 watts. 3.1 amps. This is showing 88 watts, 89, 90, so pretty close. So the sun is actually behind some of those wispy clouds up there. And you can see how low down on the horizon it is. So that panel is not getting direct optimum sunlight going down on top of it. Let's see where we're at now. Yeah, we're still at 90 watts. Pulling 30 volts. Almost three amps. Not bad, I'm close to the 100 watts that I was wanting, but I'm gonna come back out here and check at around noon or one o'clock to see if we're able to get any better output off of that panel. But, you know, folks, honestly, 90 watts, I know it's rated a 200 watt panel, but you're never gonna get 200 watts off of this setup. All right, we're sitting at around 12 o'clock noon and I'm gonna go try it again. It looks like we're pulling around 34 and a half volts right now. But one question that I get all the time is, what happens when your, when your uh, power station is completely turned off? Will it accept solar or will it recognize solar input? So let me show you what this power station does when you have solar input when it's completely off. So it's just essentially like charging it with an AC cord. It does recognize the solar, it turns itself on, and let's see what we're gonna climb up to. 92, that's probably gonna be about it. 95. Okay, it looks like 95 was about the peak of this test. And we're still sitting at around the same type of wispy clouds out front. Almost 30 volts, 3.2 amps, and still pulling 95 watts. Well, all right, gang, so we have reached over 100 watts finally. 103 watts uh, is the highest that I've seen it, and I actually had to move the solar panel because we're already in the shade here in the driveway, so I've got the solar panel actually up on top of my roof. So this time of the year is just real difficult to get uh, optimum angles on that solar panel, but with this type of solar panel, it's hard. You can't really uh, maneuver it and angle it exactly how you want, but... Like I said in the beginning of this video, if I were to get 100 watts off this panel, I'd be happy. And wouldn't you know, I am over 100 watts. So there you go, folks. Last check of the actual numbers. We got 3.3 amps, 30 volts, 100.7 watts. So there you go, folks. That's the All Powers SF200. Uh, I believe it is running for around $250 on Amazon. But these things go on sale absolutely all the time. And I think it's a pretty decent buy for a 200 watt panel. I know that I'm never gonna get close to 200 watts off of that panel just by the way that you have to mount it or the way that I'm gonna mount it to my setup. But uh, 100 watts going into a power station should do me just fine for a quick overnight, maybe two night trip with this power station. So I'm pretty happy. So guys, until next time, see you soon. Take care.